Why is white missing a queen? We're going to come back to that in just a second. But first, I have to present to you a challenge that I think 99% of you will not complete. Now, I could be wrong, so please let me know in the comments if you do get this correct. But what is this challenge? I'm going to present to you guys six positions. Here's one of them. Here's another one. Here's another one as examples. And in each of these six positions, the player who won the game announced a checkmate. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say announced a checkmate, let me explain. Before everybody played chess online, when you actually played over the board and you could see the person and hear the person and shake their hand before and after the game, there was a thing called announcing checkmate. And essentially what it was is if you saw a checkmate in the game that you were playing, you could say it. You could say, oh, uh, mate in three, and then you would deliver the checkmate. So let me give you an example. Imagine I was playing this position right here as white. It's white to move, and I see a checkmate. And by the way, if you would like to pause, do you see the checkmate for white in this position? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, hopefully you noticed the smothered checkmate pattern, which is when the queen and the knight are in this configuration on a castled king. But what I could do to announce the checkmate would be mate in three. I could just say that. I could just say mate in three, and then I would make my first move. And then my opponent at that point could either look at it, and if they agreed with me, they could just resign if they wanted to, or they could look at it and say, no, I think you're crazy. I'm going to keep moving, and they would play on, and maybe I made a mistake, and I miscalculated. Maybe it wasn't actually mate in three. In this case, it is. And uh, here's the checkmate, by the way. You sacrifice the queen, and you deliver the smothered checkmate. Okay, so very common one there. But that's the idea. You announce the checkmate, and then you, you, know, you deliver. A lot of times, it was a way to flex, to kind of surprise them, to show them that, hey, look, I was, was looking ahead. A lot of times, it's unexpected. That's kind of the idea, okay? So in each of these six games that I'm about to show you, the player announced the checkmate. However, I'm not going to tell you guys how many moves it took to checkmate the opponent. That is what you have to guess. Okay, I'm going to be giving you multiple choice, four options. So even if you're a beginner, you're going to have a 25% chance of getting it right on each of these six ones. And if you're an advanced player or an intermediate player and you want to try to find the checkmate yourself, you can do that as well and maybe get it exactly right. Although I have to warn you, these are not easy. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for the first position, we have to come back to the board here without the queen. So this actually came from a game where white was a strong player, black was an amateur, and white said, okay, look, I'll play you without the queen to give you a chance. And here's how the game went. E4, E5, knight F3, knight C6, bishop to C4. So it's kind of like an Italian game, except white doesn't have the queen, which is kind of a big deal. He defends. Black plays here, which is kind of a good idea, trying to trade the knight for the bishop. Knight takes e5, defending, and here we start to see black fall apart. Captures the pawn. d3 was played, and again, black makes a questionable move, knight to c5. And at this moment in the game, white announced a forced checkmate. Okay? So the question for you is how many moves was that forced checkmate, okay? Your options are mate in three moves, mate in five moves, mate in seven moves, or mate in nine moves. Which of those do you think was the correct solution, okay? And if you would like to pause and try to actually calculate the checkmate, that's how you'll know exactly if, you, if you're right. But like I said, these are not easy. So go ahead, what is your guess? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the correct answer is checkmate in nine moves. And what's ironic about this position is that White's only played six moves so far, and now they're announcing checkmate in nine moves. So the, the entire combination of checkmate is actually longer than the game itself. which Well, not than the game itself, but than what's been played previously up to this point. So let me go ahead and show you what the checkmate is. Bishop takes f7 check, the king moves up, bishop to g5 check, and white's not even interested in the queen, they're going for checkmate, it forces the king to d6, and here, if you were tempted to say knight to c4 check to attack the king, it doesn't actually work, because this, sorry, this knight over here can just take you, okay, so the move was knight to b5 check, 
which actually forces the king to take the knight here because you can't go here, you can't go anywhere else. And that allows f4 check, king to f5, knight to d4 check, king to g4. And I think this is a good place to pause again if you would like kind of a bonus question here. This is not part of the challenge, but it's mate in four. What's the checkmate from here in four moves? You had a chance to look at that. It's h3 check, forces the king to g3. Then the knight can come in with check on e2, forces the king to take. And then the bishop, which started all of this, comes back to d5 and finishes it off with bishop takes e4. Wow. So quite the king walk. And what's amazing is white never had the queen the entire game. Okay. So if you got that one right, make a note. But you have five more to go which is why I think most people are not going to complete this challenge. But let's go ahead and jump to the next position. All right, so position number two actually came from a game played by a former world champion, Alakine, and he was playing in a simul against 20 people at the same time. So he's playing as white against 20 different people, and this is the game against one person in particular where he announced checkmate. Okay, so let me show you very briefly how we ended up here. Queen's Gambit. Nothing really crazy. And then watch what happens here. He lines up the bishops in this direction. Okay. He gets the center, brings the rook over, jumps the knight in, sacrifices here on f7 to launch the attack, pushes e5, sinks the bishop into a nice outpost there, lines up the rook, and once he's got everything ready, he's got the bishops, in an aggressive position, he's got the rooks in an aggressive position. He's got the queen in an aggressive position. He's used his pawns to gain space and push forward. After a4, he announces checkmate right here and then plays the move. So again, your task is simple. How many moves did he announce mate in? Was it five? Was it six? Was it 10? Or was it 11? So mate in five, mate in six, mate in 10, or mate in 11. Go ahead and pause. Think through that if you would like. And when you have your guess, I'll go over the solution. All right. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is queen to h5 check, which is a very nice queen sacrifice. And the solution is mate in 10 moves. And again, this was in a simul. So this is great. He's walking around. He's playing 20 different people. And he just stops at this board and says, it's mate in 10, and he plays queen to h5 check. Let's take a look at why this is checkmate. Of course, you have to take it. If you don't take it and play g6, it's just over immediately because the bishop here is involved. You do have to accept the sacrifice, which allows f takes e6, which opens up the rook and forces the king to start running. So king to g6, bishop to c2 check. And again, the king has nowhere to go except up. This was kind of a tricky moment in the puzzle. How do you proceed from here? Rook to f5 was the key move, getting the rook involved. The king tries to go back and hide. But again, rook to f6. And it's a double check, which is important because you can't take the rook here because the bishop is unleashed. Also, it's defended, so you can't just take that with the king. And so now when the king comes up, it allows you to go rook to g6 check coming around this way. King to h4, rook to e4 check, knight to f4, takes with check, king to h5, and now it's checkmate in two, if you would like to pause just for the fun of it. How did white finish off the game from here? You had a chance to look at that. The move is g3, which is really interesting because it's not even a check. It's just a simple pawn move, and then doesn't matter what black does. Any move that black plays is going to be checkmated by rook to h4. Literally any move. You could take that. It's just checkmate. So that was 10 moves, believe it or not, and he announced that in the middle of a simul. Pretty fascinating stuff. All right. If you're two for two, well, I'm already impressed, but we still have four more positions to go. All right. Here's the next position. This is where Black announced a checkmate, and I do want to show you how we ended up here because this was an interesting game. It was a King's Gambit game that was played Back in 1853, 
And let's take a look at how we ended up here. King's Gambit accepted. This was one of the, the main lines at the, at the time. A lot of people would accept the Gambit, try to hold on to the pawn. You had some really interesting games happen after H4 and G4. It's just wild what, what happens here. So let's just keep going. We'll take a look at this. The knight comes over. Notice black was attacking the pawn here. And for whatever reason, white allowed that capture. Maybe they didn't see it. And now the king has to move. Queen to g5 lines up again on the king. And where is the king going to escape at? Well, white decides to try to run this way. Knight to c6. A3 stopping the knight from coming into b4. Bishop to f2. Just trying to put pressure around the king and attack these weak squares. Knight to d5 takes the pawn. Sacrifices the exchange here. White doesn't want it. Tries to defend instead. f5 takes takes king goes to c4 here we are in the position where black announced the checkmate so the question for you guys did black say mate in five mate in seven mate in nine or mate in eleven well if you had a chance to look at that the correct solution is mate in nine and it starts with again Another brilliant queen sacrifice. Queen takes d5. Check. Forces the king to take. It's the only move. And now you could follow that up with knight to f6. Check. And what's incredible here is these minor pieces. The knights and the bishop. Look at how many squares they're controlling. You've got this, 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 this. This is defended. Only place for the king to go is to c4. Bishop e6. Check. Now all four pieces are attacking the king. King to b5 a6 check, king to a4, b5 check, takes, 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 and now it's mate in three. If you would like to pause, what's the finishing touch here from black? You had a chance to look at that. The move is rook to a5 check, finally activating a stronger piece, forces the king to capture, and then bishop to d5 check, followed by knight to e8. Beautiful checkmate there. The bishops, the rook, the knight, and white's king literally like walked all over the board and was kind of chased around in circles. All right, we're at the halfway point. We have three more games to go. And if you've solved these correctly so far, I would already be very impressed. All right, here's the next position. And again, black announced a checkmate. Let's actually see very briefly how we ended up here. Started out as kind of a boring game. Both players weren't really doing much. And then all of a sudden, watch what happens here. White decides to slide the rook over and try to avoid trading the bishops, which can be a dangerous thing. And black took advantage of that by launching a very dangerous attack here. Brings the knight in, brings the queen over, takes, takes, and watch this move right here. Knight to e3, very dangerous move because if white takes that, it's simply checkmate by the two bishops. You can see the dangers of putting that bishop on h1 because you no longer have the escape square for the king. Okay, but white saw that, played queen to b3. Black goes here and solidifies the knight in the center. And here white plays what they thought was a very tricky move. Knight takes d4. And the idea is that if black takes that, queen takes d4 actually creates a checkmate threat here on h8. And at the same time, they're threatening now to take the, the knight because this is defended by the queen. So a very nice idea, but black didn't take the knight and instead announced checkmate. Question for you is, how many moves did they announce checkmate in? Seven, eight, nine, or ten? Was it checkmate in seven, eight, nine, or ten? if you had a chance to look at that the correct answer is mate in seven and again it starts with a queen sacrifice and this one was really really cool so queen takes f2 check of course the king has to take knight to g4 check and notice what happens if the king tries to run back then the bishop comes in and we see this again crisscross checkmate here with the bishops so what does that mean white can't do that and instead has to run out to f3 and now there's a very nice move here for black if you would like to pause. How did black continue the attack? Well, the move is e4 check, sacrificing the pawn to open up this square for the other knight to get involved in the game. And if 
White were to try to take with the pawn, you simply get checkmated immediately. Look at this. There's no escape square for the king. Okay, and that's going to be true if you take with the pawn or if you take with the knight. So instead, white has to take with the king. King takes e4. And then watch what happens with these knights. This is really, really cool. Check. Forces the king to go back. Check. Check. So the knights basically switched places there. This one jumped over here and this one came back. And at all the while, it's forcing the king back to g1 where you can deliver the checkmate with bishop to e3. So really, really nice checkmate. And it was announced in the middle of the game as well. All right, guys, that's four out of six. We have two more positions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the fifth one. Here's the position. Let me show you briefly how we ended up here. This was a Danish gambit, which is a very fun opening where you give up a whole bunch of pawns to get quick development. So d4 takes, c3 takes, takes. In this case, black decided to just accept everything which is a lot of fun usually, in my opinion. And then we see some trades here, and then the knight jumps in, and what you'll notice about black's king is there's no pieces over there to defend it. The knight's been traded off. These pieces are still stuck on the back because earlier in the game when black was taking pawns, white was developing pieces, right? And now we can see why you might want to play an opening like this. The move here was knight to f6 check brilliant sacrifice to open up the king and after bishop to d3 rook to e8 here is where white announced checkmate again the question for you is how many moves did it take white to checkmate black your choices are four six eight or ten did white have checkmate in four mate in six mate in eight or mate in ten what do you think? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the answer is mate in eight. Eight moves for checkmate, and it goes like this. Queen takes h7 check, and I want you to pay attention to black's king here. King moves to f8, okay? Queen check. Grab the pawn, and look at this. The king, again, has to move to f8. Now queen h6 check, and this time you can't run here, because if you run here again, this is actually checkmate. Nice little checkmate pattern there. So the king has to move to g8 instead. Check with the bishop. This is another common mating pattern. If you haven't seen this one before, you want to remember this with the bishop and the queen. Check, check. And for the third time, the king has to go to f8. And then there's checkmate on f7. Congratulations. If you got that one, it was mate in eight. And this brings us to our final position of this challenge, which is right here. Let me show you briefly how we ended up here, and then you can guess how many moves it took. Knight to c3, weird gambit here. Black decides to decline it by moving the knight and plays a terrible move, f6. All right, it's white to play. They announced checkmate. The question for you, how many moves? Was it mate in three, mate in six, mate in eight, or mate in nine? What do you guys think? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the correct solution is mate in eight. And here's how it went. Queen to h5 check. And there's one thing I want to point out here. When I was looking at this, I was tempted to say bishop check first. And in my mind, I was thinking the king's going to go here. I could go check. He goes here. I could go check. He goes here. I could go check. Here, I could go check, he takes, and I could get checkmate. And I believe that's six moves, if I'm not mistaken. And that's what I thought maybe the solution was, but I actually miscalculated something, and I'll show you in actually I'll show you right now what I miscalculated. One, two, three, four, five, and it would have been six if I show if, if he did this, but instead black can actually just take the pawn, which messes it up, takes more moves not the solution, okay? So that's what I didn't calculate correctly. So going back to here, the solution is queen check first. G6 is no good. because Well, you have to play G6, but at least, actually, yeah, G6, you have to play. What I was going to say is king E7 is no good because then you have check, even faster checkmate, knight to B5, followed by check, check, checkmate. Okay, cool. So 
Black has to play, sorry, I'm getting myself confused. Black has to play g6. And then, now that your queen is on h5, you now can go into that same line that I just showed you where the bishop comes in, the king comes up, check, 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 check. And what do you notice? The knight can't take the pawn like we saw before because the queen is sitting over there. So this was a critical move to throw in, okay? And now, after king takes b4, if you would like to pause, how do you finish off the game with white? You get a chance to look at that. The move is c3 check. And after the king moves to b3, you actually bring the queen all the way back to d1 and deliver the checkmate. Pretty amazing game there. And again, that one was also announced. Okay. Well, congratulations if you solved all of those. Please let me know because I imagine you're in rare company. Um, I know that was very difficult, but I hope that you could at least appreciate those cool checkmates and maybe enjoy you know the games leading up to them let me know if you like this kind of video or how i could improve this i don't know if i was going too fast if it was too much if it was too difficult or if it was fun let me know thank you guys and i'll see you next time stay sharp play smart take care